Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Davis. Мы из Украины. Right now, Kyiv is a defense citadel of entire European civilization, protecting it from Russian aggression. It is here that heroes from all over the world protect democratic values at cost of their own lives. Today's issue of Kyiv Fortress will tell you a lot of heroic stories. You will learn how the Ukrainian army destroyed the Russian occupiers on the outskirts to our capital. You will learn about the consequences of radiation exposure for Russian soldiers who dug near Chernobyl nuclear power plant. You will learn how Russian aircraft deliberately destroyed a civilian village in Kiev region. Kiev resident Polina, like hundreds and thousands of other women, is helping Ukrainian defenders hear her story. See more about these and many other things in today's issue of Kiev Fortress. Frontline drive. While the region was hit by the rockets, we got together, received weapons and ammunition, and immediately moved to the positions. There were times when we were just sitting in the woods and column of K-52 helicopters was flying over us. Sometimes we also ravaged the columns of Russian Federation vehicles. In Irpin, we understood that those Marines were supposed to be specialists, and their weapons were a little bit better than ours. Yet we had enough of our own weaponry to smash them properly. In battle and firefighting they are very weak. They mostly covered us with mortars and hail. If you come here, you will stay here forever. Welcome to hell. Rays of a good. This is the Stalker's Pass. We are now in Pripyat, the place of the most extensive radioactive contamination in the world. But still, the Red Forest is a more dangerous place, and it is 3-4 kilometers away from us. We can get there in an hour or drive there in 10 minutes. Orcs, Russians just dug a defensive fighting position there, right between Chistohalivka and Yavnove. Chistohalivka is a village that was basically buried underground after the accident because of the pollution levels showings. There were just one and a half million gents, and they were digging on the roadsides. The amount of the radioactive dirt was enormously huge. They breathed it, ate there, slept there, and the radioactive dust settled in their lungs. They won't have to wait for long until they die from lung cancer or other cancers. What we know for sure is they will die. They will pay in full for what they have done in Ukraine. It flew from the forest and bombed. It was the Black Shark helicopters. It was scary. Especially when the MiG was flying with such bombs that oh. More than that, they also launched phosphorus bombs, after which five horses literally disappeared as if they had never existed. My mother died there during the bombing on the 18th, and I buried her. No matter how much people tried to hide, I couldn't save her. Let our boys beat their scoundrels so that they die hard. As they died on the Zamkova Hora, I hope the crows would tear them apart, and that asshole let him die in his bunker. That's what I want to tell him. Angels of good. I have been involved in charity during my entire life, and when the war started, it was clear that I won't go anywhere. I would be needed here. We need to support our people, our fighters, and the people of Kyiv who cannot help themselves. Initially, when there was a collapse in food, we helped pensioners, the disabled, and single mothers. Now the situation is easier, so we help more temporarily displaced people, and of course, our guys, we hold meetings and buy the necessary. Some need the uniform, military boots. 
everything people need, we try to help and get it. We also help with animal support. Ukrainians are united, and it is also a full-fledged Europe. The world supports us, because we are a part of this world. Supporting us also benefits to our independence. The war for life and freedom in Europe continues. See Kiev Fortress in a week about more events in Ukraine. I'm Julia Davis, and on behalf of me and Kiev Fortress, thank you for the privilege of your time. Stay safe. Slava Ukraini!